On the rocks at Paulina's feet, a huge orangutan with sharp fangs nimbly walked through the jungle, ignoring the rain and wet leaves under its feet. The beast approached quickly, causing the girl to shudder with fear. When Paulina arrived in Africa, she never expected to find herself in such a situation. The girls and their friends were picked up from the airport by the hotel's tour guide, who, after a few hours of jeep driving, introduced the area while wearing a listening device in each ear and reiterated several times that it was best not to go into the jungle alone. Paulina saw this as exaggerated advertising by the tour guides, who had to pay an hourly fee to accompany them. Apparently, he doesn't want tourists to go alone. The girl has accumulated considerable experience in travel. She has traveled in the Amazon rainforest and visited national parks in Thailand, so she is confident in her abilities. For the first two days, the tour guide never left the tourist's side, showing them the trails they were walking, taking them to visit the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center, and leading them on a tour of the town. The activity left her friends feeling quite exhausted. They want to enjoy cocktails, fresh fruit and swimming in the hotel pool while on vacation. Therefore, on the third day, they let the tour guide rest. Paulina quickly grew tired of sitting in one place. She decided to take a walk in the jungle and it was not far from the hotel. The girl brought spare water and food, and did not forget to carry a satellite phone, and set up a call to the local rescue service on her mobile phone. She seemed prepared for everything. On leaving the hotel, the receptionist asked Paulina about her destination in broken English. The girl pointed with her finger in the direction of the jungle. Although the man explained something to her, the language was almost entirely words from the local dialect. But Paulina understood it a little better through context. The jungle beyond is dangerous and no one comes back from there. The man also said something about a dark giant soul. However, Paulina did not entirely believe the words of the man wearing the chicken foot bone amulet. She politely said she didn't care and thought he was talking nonsense. In order to appreciate the man's concern, the girl walked decisively towards the forest. The man shouted from behind about the flood, but the girl just smiled at the sky. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, and the sun burned mercilessly. Paulina believes that the administrators are colluding with the tour guides to obtain their commissions by not allowing tourists to roam alone. The girl wasn't planning on going too far. She saw on the map a small lake a few kilometers away from the hotel, enough for her to walk there and back. Paulina tightened the straps of her backpack, took a deep breath of the fresh air of the very special African forest, and walked resolutely into the shade of the trees. The first few kilometers were easy as the girl admired nature and listened to the singing of birds. She abandoned her thoughts in silence. When she regained consciousness, she was surprised to find silence. The birds stopped chirping. High in the canopy, the little monkeys were also missing. The girl looked around cautiously, but didn't notice anything suspicious. Suddenly, the surroundings became gloomy, and Paulina couldn't help but think of the administrator's words about dark souls, and a chill surged through her body. There were some rumblings in the distance, and the girl was jumping on the spot, thinking about which direction to escape. At this moment, a cold drop of rain fell on her head. Paulina looked up at the sky and laughed. It was just rain, just birds and animals hiding in the clouds. Low-pressure clouds blanketed the sky, darkening the forest. The heavy rain, accompanied by the sound of pattering, soon filled the fresh air. Paulina turned and walked back, but after she had taken a few steps, the rain turned into a torrential downpour, soaking her instantly. No matter which tree she hid under, it was useless. The rain fell in the form of a dense wall. The girl could not see anything around her and could not reach her fingers. Paulina ran almost desperately, barely having time to check her compass. The land around her turned sharply into a quagmire, and the autumn leaves became slippery beneath her feet. Rain falls on the ground and forms streams. The girl suddenly slipped and fell onto the rain-covered leaves, and an excruciating pain shot through her ankle. 
Paulina screamed, clutching her ankle, expecting to see a broken bone, but everything seemed normal but the pain was growing. Under such circumstances, Paulina felt her vision darken. When she was able to blink again, the rain had stopped slightly and turned into a steady drizzle again. The dense wall of water makes the forest a little brighter. The tourist looked around at the trees and suddenly noticed a huge black spot. The shadow began to move toward her, and it soon became clear that it was a massive orangutan. The animal was visibly unhappy because its territory was being violated. The corners of the orangutan's mouth twisted into an angry look, with sharp fangs exposed outside of its mouth. Paulina was stunned. In such situations, angry animals often tear the uninvited guest to pieces. The girl's heartbeat quickened, a wave of fear came over her, and her hands trembled. Suddenly, she seemed to see herself from the perspective of a bystander, flying thousands of kilometers just to see the wild animals in Africa, only to die in the claws of nature. Paulina gave an unusual burst of nervous laughter. The orangutan stopped and stared at her. Although he stopped trying to get closer, he didn't leave either. Suddenly, a story flashed through her mind about their tour guide entertaining them on the way to the hotel. In the story, a man faces a dangerous predator alone, but he doesn't panic. He spread his shirt to make himself look bigger and roared loudly. The beast acknowledges that his opponent is bigger and decides to adopt the same strategy. The girl suddenly decided to use the same method. She raised her hands, spread them out to her sides, and roared at the top of her lungs. The orangutan was even surprised by this and stood still without trying to get closer. The rocks turned to confusion and the animal stopped moving. Suddenly it occurred to her that there might be other tourists nearby. She didn't know how far she had run, maybe she was not far from the hotel, so she screamed again. With each scream, the sound grew softer and softer. Paulina realized that even though she was 100 meters away, her voice might not be heard due to rain and wind noise. However, at least the loud noises kept the orangutans at a distance. Suddenly, the orangutan shook his head and began to approach again. The girl tried to duck to one side, but she was unable to walk due to the excruciating pain in her ankle. She suddenly remembered the cardinal rule of bear encounters, drop to the ground and play dead. Putting her hands on her shoulders, the girl tried to close her eyes and breathe as deeply as she could, hoping she wouldn't be noticed. Soon after, the girl heard the animal panting and it walked around her, sniffing her hands and feet carefully. When it touched the injured ankle, the girl couldn't help but let out a suppressed moan of pain. The animal then roared, slapped the girl with its hand, then suddenly lifted her onto its shoulders and dragged her somewhere. The girl's heart went blank. She was afraid that she would be dragged into the cave to be eaten by the beast as lunch. At this moment, Paulina regretted her lack of preparation. She did not know enough about the ecology and wildlife of nature, and did not even read information about flora and fauna before traveling. In this situation, she had no plan to fight or escape. So she grabbed the animal's thick hair and tried to avoid falling to the ground. The orangutan took her to a small cave and threw her on the ground. The girl fell to the ground in pain, bruising her knees and palms. She turned quickly to face the animal, trying to appear small and inconspicuous, but she couldn't hide her injured ankle. However, the orangutan didn't seem to care and stayed quietly at the entrance of the cave, staring at the rain. At this time, Paulina suddenly had a guess. The orangutan was not attacking her, but protecting her. The beast moved her to a safe and dry place and now guards her here. Who knows what predators might be around, so the orangutan decides to move her to a safe place and then guard her. Paulina breathed a sigh of relief and remembered her phone, which she pulled out under the gaze of the curious orangutan. The phone and everything in the backpack got wet, but Paulina managed to dry it off. The cell phone sent a signal, and Paulina breathed a sigh of relief and called the rescue number, explaining her predicament to them. They asked her to stay where she was, not turn off her phone, and wait for rescuers. The orangutan watched the call with interest but showed no aggression. 
Paulina wanted to thank the animal in some way, so she took out her food stash and handed it to the orangutan. The orangutan looked at the cookie suspiciously, and Paulina broke off a small piece with her hands. Rescue workers found Paulina a few hours later. At that point, the fear of orangutans completely disappeared. When the animal turned toward her, Paulina just gently threw her backpack over her shoulder, and the orangutan slung her over his shoulder and carried her out of the cave and placed her in a clearing. The orangutan backed away and disappeared silently among the trees. Memories of the trip appeared like a mist as crowds appeared nearby, but the encounter with the orangutans stayed in Paulina's heart forever. It turns out that even scary wild animals can feel compassion and help humans. This story may strike many as fictional, but in fact gorillas are quite peaceful creatures, and there are many records of them helping humans in danger, protecting them from danger until help arrives. However, people are not always grateful for the help and sometimes even kill the gorillas, believing they pose a threat to their victims. Then is the second story. Let's begin. Shortly after finding out his wife was pregnant, Newsom adopted a two-year-old puppy from a local rescue called Brutus, who, Newsom said, was just a big teddy. He loved the attention and cuddling with people, and when Newsom was 20 weeks pregnant, hospital scans revealed her baby had a serious heart defect. So Finn had multiple surgeries immediately after he was born, and he was able to have open heart surgery until he was a bit older, we were very lucky to find that out before he was born, otherwise he wouldn't be here today that he'll be here and he won't be seeing us. Newsom said, Fenn was finally able to go home after weeks of recovery and some of his complications being treated. Finn can finally go home. As soon as we got home and got the first glimpse of his little brother in Brutus, it was like Brutus knew Finn needed some extra close monitoring, and he's been with Finn ever since around. Newsom said Brutus would often curl up where Finn sat and follow him from room to room. If Finn was sick, Brutus would know right away and stay by Finn's side or turn his head on Finn's chest, Brutus did not like to be separated from Finn, even for a moment, he would scratch himself at the door of Finn's room, or pace outside until he was allowed into his room. The two brothers don't even like to be alone in the room at night or sleep alone. When Finn was a baby, this very protective dog slept on the rug in front of the crib. Now Finn has moved to a toddler bed where the brothers could snuggle better, Finn just started sleeping in his big bed a little over a month ago now that he's a big boy. That's when Brutus began crawling into Finn's bed every night to sleep, and he lay next to Finn as if to keep him from rolling out of bed, Brutus said wherever Finn went, wherever it went, Newsom said. Even if it meant he would be a little uncomfortable, Finn later started crawling out of bed and sleeping on his floor, but naturally, Brutus started sleeping next to him, too, Newsom said. Now that Newsom has moved Brutus' dog bed to Finn's room, Finn will often choose to snuggle up with Brutus in his bed rather than stay in his own bed, which Newsom was able to capture on camera recently some of their cute behavior at night, that looks very warming. If Brutus is sleeping on the floor, Finn will grab his blanket and climb out of bed so he can snuggle up next to his pal, as long as his brother is comfortable, this tame dog doesn't mind being used as a pillow, and now the family people were looking forward to waking up to Finn and Brutus curled up together, and Finn slept with Brutus all night, every night, Newsom said. Whether in Finn's dog bed or on the floor, the two have always slept together, and Newsom is happy that Finn has a good friend and a reliable protector, and the family can't wait to watch grow up together, dogs are adorable pets, that's a fact you can't argue with. It's no surprise, they are considered man's best friends, and luckily dog owners always spend a lot of time with their pets and manage to capture funny and touching moments for us. California couple Joshua Fisher and his wife decided to adopt a pair of dogs to join their family of three young boys, Lennox, Cruz, and Tegan. They chose a pair of heavyweight dogs, and they brought home two Newfoundland dogs, whom they named Persia and Rafi, and despite their size they were very cute and affectionate, and the two the dogs take great care of their three little owners. The three children live with the two dogs and the parents are delighted that their children and their pets get along so well that they are practically inseparable and play together every day. As stated earlier, Persia and Rafi are two Newfoundland dogs, which means they weigh 60 kilograms each. Cruz played a lot of baseball, 
he was on the school team, he took baseball very seriously, and he was often anxious about it because he worried that he would play badly or make mistakes in the game. The whole family wanted to go to his next game and cheer him on. They wanted to show the kid their utmost support, but unfortunately, the dogs were not allowed on the field this time, Cruz felt sad. Without the support of his beloved dogs, it felt a little less encouraging, and as the family was getting ready to watch the boys play, the giant dog rushed across the yard, but Cruz wasn't scared because he knew it was be polite, and it sure won't hurt him. One of the dogs ran up to him and started licking his face, as if wishing the boy good luck before a game, and poking his nose on the boy's shoulder, as if to show his support. The video was shot in 2016, and judging from social media, the children are still having fun with their pets and they are still living happily together. The video, titled Giant Newfoundland Giving Good Luck Kiss has more than 6 million views on YouTube, has gone viral and has gone viral, and the family and the two dogs have a lot to gain fans, many commenters wrote that there is nothing sweeter than owning a huge, kind dog, let alone two. In 2019, the Fishers family sold their old house and they set off on a road trip across the US in their RV, wanting to visit all the states in their area. We are just following God where we are supposed to go and our family plans to have this joyful wild life this year and we want to visit all 50 states in this area. They started sharing details of their journey on Instagram, which was joyous and fulfilling. Now they have more than 200,000 fans. However, their homepage is still best known for two huge and very cute dogs. Newfoundlands are very capable and intelligent, these noble dogs make one of the greatest pets and they get along well with people, but if you're considering and planning to keep one of your own, all you need to know is that they need a lot of attention and companionship, you have to make sure you give them that much, otherwise, it will be torture for them and you will not have the same happy life as them. As they say, there are no bad dogs, only bad owners.